Hi, it's Dwyer. It's May the 3rd, 2018. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many people here online in the comment section to an earlier video I made where I discussed how Deontay Wilder's $50 million offer to Anthony Joshua, right, made by Shelley Finkel with the backing of Al Heyman needed to be taken seriously, right? I said, you know, quite frankly, Joshua needs to sign that contract. They can talk about their obligations to third parties, right? Whatever promotional obligations they have and things like that. Uh, broadcasting obligations to media outlets and what have you. But understand, the $50 million offer needs to be taken seriously given the backgrounds of the people involved, right? Al Heyman's been in the game a long time, has been part of the biggest purses in boxing history. Shelly Finkel has been in the game a long time, has been an advisor to an A-list of championship fighters, right? Heyman and Finkel have the kind of gravitas, quite frankly, where when they offer you $50 million, you should assume that they can deliver. So, of course, I know there's a generational gap here. I know many people here online are uh, younger than I am, right? They're from a digital age that expects a certain level of accuracy and thoroughness that we didn't have back in the day. So people are saying, how could he take that seriously when Deontay Wilder won't agree to a meeting and things like that, right? Just understand, Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos, the great Jeff Bezos, the head of Amazon, has a rule, it's the two pizza rule, where he won't attend meetings. He won't attend meetings that require more than two pizzas for the people there, right? There's an entire school of thought that in this digital age, when I can pick up a phone and call you, I can email you, I can text you, the idea of us getting in the same room with a bunch of people is wasteful. Well, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to throw out an offer to the boxing press because these people are still alive. Let's talk about one of the biggest fights in boxing history, the Rumble in the Jungle, right? Champion George Foreman against then challenger Muhammad Ali, right? Huge fight. Both guys got paid $5 million for the fight. Think about it, $5 million. Let me just say this. <coughs> After he signs Ali to the fight, George Foreman literally ambushes. That's the great Jack Newfield's word, right? Newfield, one of the great writers in boxing history. He ambushes George Foreman in the parking lot of an Oakland hotel. Right? He talks about Ali. He says he has a contract with Ali. He says to Foreman, look, I'll give you five million dollars to fight Muhammad Ali. Five million dollars. George Foreman, who's still alive, as is Don King. In other words, the press can ask them about it. George Foreman then proceeds to sign seven blank pieces of paper. I'm not kidding. Right? He signs blank pieces of paper that Don King later fills in. Right? That leads to the fight. Right? Seven pieces of blank paper. Foreman, of course, receives $5 million for the fight. And the fight goes on to be part of the heavyweight division's folklore. Now, all I'm saying is understand there are ways to protect yourself. 
you get an offer of fifty million dollars you can say hey right uh, pay me X percent of the fifty million dollars up front and we'll consider that liquidated damages if you can't deliver on the rest of the deal in other words I'll accept some good faith money it's mine once I accept it right if you're able to follow through and deliver on the deal okay great I'll take the rest of the 50 million if you can't then the money I've accepted up front is mine and I can share that money with whoever I choose <coughs> the sparring partners who've given up opportunities to agree to my camp uh, whatever right my manager my promoter etc so there's really no reason for Anthony Joshua, given the names involved, given the fact that if Jeff Bezos offered you $50 million or Warren Buffett offered you $50 million, you would understand that these guys have access to the financing, right? And you could dumb down the deal in the short term to take a little taste up front, let's say $1 million deposit with the understanding that as you get closer to the fight, you're going to get letters of credit and stuff like that. Folks, that's the way the real world operates. Let me just say, I can guarantee you, I mean, I know this is true because I've lived this. I can guarantee you that lawyers will often settle cases on the courthouse steps right before a case or hell in the middle of a trial. Right? They'll, they'll settle a case with the understanding that they'll write it up later. Let me also say, too, that the heavyweight division, the championship, especially a fight like this, between two unbeaten heavyweight champions, right, has an inherent value. Right? Understand, they're financing sources they're investors who if you go to them and you say hey I have a bout between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder are you interested in investing right the investor will say hell yes the investor won't even have to do due diligence if he knows boxing because he knows who Anthony Joshua is right I'll even go further if he does due diligence, what's he going to find? More than 80,000 people attending a Anthony Joshua Vladimir Klitschko fight? Joshua clearing 70,000 people for multiple fights? Understand, too, many of the hotels that you're trying to shop this to, many of the media outlets that you would be trying to shop this to, have advertising budgets. Right? They sponsor events. They pay for commercials. What's a bigger commercial than a big fight like this at your venue? Right? So, again, if you feel it's far-fetched for fighters not to meet and sit down, travel across the water to consider a $50 million deal, I just want you to think about Don King hopping out of the bushes and getting George Foreman to sign seven blank pieces of paper, right? That end up being the contract for the rumble in the jungle, right? George Foreman is still spry. He's still up and about. He has a TV show. Don King is actively involved in boxing, right? I believe he's involved in this Golovkin uh, fight, Bartorosian fight. Right? The press is around. Go ahead and ask him how George Foreman was signed. Right? Often, you don't have the time to go to a meeting to hold some guy's hand. You don't have the time to go to a meeting so the guy can look you in the face and tell that you're serious. Right? Just based on reputation. Who does bigger fights in boxing than Al Heyman? How much money has Al Heyman netted for Floyd Mayweather? Right? If I were Joshua, quite frankly, 
The minute they offered me $50 million, I would have said, look, let me check with my sponsors. Let me look at the contracts I have with other people to make sure me agreeing to this deal doesn't violate some covenant someplace. Right? The 50, I'm very interested. Just give me a liquidated damages, you know, good faith money up front so that if it falls apart, none of the risk is on me. Let's shift gears. You know what? There was a recent fight. It surprised me quite a bit. Right? The WBO Super Bantamweight Championship. Let me just say, even now as I sit here, I still consider Jesse Magdaleno to be one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in boxing. But what made this fight interesting? And he lost. Right? To Isaac Dogbe, who remains unbeaten. But what made this fight interesting were the style matchups. Right, folks? Magdaleno has a pretty good jab. <coughs> One of the ways to dodge a jab, and you'll see it in this fight, is to use upper body movement. Bend at the waist. Move your head. Make it hard for the guy to land on you. Bob and weave. Right now, this fight, remarkably, reminds me of the first Ali Fraser fight. Right? Where Ali's in there with Joe Fraser, who's bobbing and weaving, and Ali has a hard time landing his jab. Ali, who used to just dance away from guys, has a hard time staying away from Joe Fraser. Joe Fraser cuts off the ring, often has Ali with his back up against the ropes, and this wasn't the rumble in the jungle. This is three years earlier, right? You didn't get the feeling Ali wanted to be up on the ropes, but there he was. Now, Isaac Dogbe, excellent, excellent fight. He comes in low against a guy who I consider blessed, right? Just understand, in terms of hand speed and foot speed, Magdaleno has the advantage. Magdaleno also is a guy who normally has more volume than his opponent. <coughs> but here, Dogbo comes in low. Comes in low. Just like Rocky Marciano used to. Right? Just like Joe Fraser used to. Dogbait comes in low. Magdaleno can't land his jab with any regularity on Dogbait's head. Right? Because Dogbait is coming in at angles and he's moving. And Dogbait is landing uppercuts. He's landing body shots. He's landing hard to read hooks. In other words, he throws a hook like this. You don't know if it's going up top or down low. It becomes apparent in a fight where Magdaleno drops Dog Bay early. You get the feeling we're going to be out of here in 10 minutes. It becomes apparent that like Ali against Fraser, that first fight. Hell, the thrill in Manila, the third fight too. Magdaleno, who normally can move away from a guy, who normally has great legs, jab. Hand speed. Magdaleno cannot keep Dog Bay off of him. Right? Magdaleno finds himself, like Ali, up on the ropes. Right? This is a guy who fought Nanito Denier and had Denier up on the ropes. Right? Seemed to be landing hooks, more hooks than Denier landed. And here he is against a guy who's coming in low, who's bending at the waist, who's rolling away from the jab, right? And Magdaleno just could not keep him off of him, right? So let me congratulate Isaac Dogbay. I didn't see him winning the fight. He won it convincingly. Right? Masterful performance. He gets the stoppage. You got the feeling at the end of the fight that Magdaleno's ribs 
were as sore as Ali's ribs were. After that first fight against Fraser, where I believe Fraser breaks his jaw or something like that. Right? Masterful performance. Isaac Dogbay is the WBA super WBO super bantamweight champion. Right? I'm hoping that somehow this guy gains weight and goes up eventually against the winner of the Linares Lomachenko fight which is at a much higher weight class. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you want to comment on any aspect of this video, right? The idea that a champion could doubt the integrity of a $50 million offer from two of the biggest behind the scenes men in the business, right? Uh, whether you feel that that's the right thing to do. I understand, by the way, Eddie Hearn says the contract is 70% complete now. My point to you is expect the deal to get done. Joshua would be absolutely foolish if he were to fight anyone other than Deontay Wilder right now. Understand, that's the fight that has the biggest legacy. Lord knows he's getting paid for the risk. In my opinion, if you're interested in your legacy, you're better off losing to a big name in a big fight than you are losing to a no name or a lesser name in not as big a fight, right? I believe we're just days away from the guys announcing that that fight's a done deal. Understand when they announce it, that won't necessarily mean that Al Heyman and Shelly Finkel have $50 million socked away in a bank account ready to give AJ. What it'll mean is that those guys are committed to get the $50 million. And I'm just telling you that I'd be surprised if right now their phone wasn't ringing off the hook. Right? It's like the NFL selling advertising for the Super Bowl. You're going to have a lot of people who want their name associated with the event, right? Heyman and Finkel know from music that you announce the tour, you get the commitment from the artist, then you collect a lot of the money, right? Finally, let me just say, if you want to talk about Isaac Dogbe, unbeaten fighter from Africa, Right, there's a film here online of him winning a fight, turning to the crowd and just yelling. And the crowd yells back at him. And you understand, this guy is the man. Well, understand, he's no longer the African champion. He's the WBO super bantamweight world champion. Let's see how much noise he makes in the division and with his punch in the divisions above Super Bantamweight. Anyway, that's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by. And finally, if you see George Foreman, or if you run into Don King, ask them about the rumble in the jungle, right? I'm not expecting Anthony Joshua to sign seven blank pieces of paper, but just understand that one champion did so and received one of the biggest paydays in boxing up to that point. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.